Alright, hit the button. Having kind of a rough day. Yeah. Second try at this uh, voyage. <laughs> I had to go take a nap. Uh, don't feel good. Anyway, um, uh, subjects. Yeah. Alright, I was sort of thinking about consciousnesses and um, why do. Oh, bottle cap. Where the hell it got out here? Anyway, I didn't do it. Um, airplane. I love an airplane. Um, where was I? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, this whole perspective thing again. And, uh, uh, you know, how, how, do, how do people rate uh, things? You know, the quality of things even. How, how much they, how, how they prioritize or how, how they apply importance to things. So I guess in a way that sort of relates to conference support and beauty. So there has to be enough of that in your life. Um, you know, that overwhelm the, <laughs> the really gross, ugly parts. Um, but yeah, the, the gross, ugly parts are more common. Um, you know, we, we can sort of agree on what sucks. I mean, no one's going to have a hard time saying having cancer sucks and, um, you know, feeling like shit sucks. But it's like feeling good. That's when we're... We feel good for very different reasons or in different ways. And, you know, it just gets kind of complicated. You know, it's almost like the, um, you know, how, you know, women sort of gain satisfaction in relationships in kind of a different way than men do. I think we could agree on that. Uh, and that we, we live for different things. Um, you know, some people live to climb stupid mountains. I've brought that up before. It kind of seems completely ludicrous to me. I don't see any value in the risk, any value in the experience, the accomplishment, beating nature. Well, what the fuck is that? That's just stupid. <laughs> For the sake of it? Come on. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, come on. If you, if, you know, if you had some realistic hope that there was a Shangri-La or something up there, then maybe it'd be worth it, but there's no hope of that. Uh, oh, yeah. I like we're doing that. So, yeah. So, I mean, this all relates to sort of this argument because just this idea that there's these people that think life is intrinsically good. That being alive is intrinsically good. And they almost think it applies for everything. Everything is just saying, oh, I'm so happy to be alive and have these lichens growing on my bark. And, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know if is that really... You know, you know. I'm, I'm just saying we could go up to every animal and ask it, but no one's going to do that. Um, uh, so all we got is these human opinions, and yes, the dominant opinion is everything's just fine. Well, I mean, yes, it could do with some cleaning up and improvement, but generally speaking, the you know, make a wound, bandage a wound philosophy is just fine. And it's like, what the fuck? Why is there this distinction? And also, why is there completely different standards, I guess is what I want to get to. I mean, the curiosity is, is that we have such different standards for what's acceptable. Some people um, won't accept a, having a pimple. I mean, they got a pimple, they're, you know, they'll lock themselves in the basement for three months. Um, I mean, they just can't accept it. They can't accept even that blemish. Uh, you know, because it just destroys... Um, what, what they define as acceptable standards of quality and, and functionality. I certainly wouldn't accept a life, you know, probably in a wheelchair or, um, you know, dependent on others. I could never live having other people take care of me. That would be just so obnoxiously abhorrent to me. Uh, mostly because, yeah, I wouldn't see the purpose in it. I wouldn't see, um, I, I don't value myself enough to say I'd be worth the time, the investment. Um, so, yeah, it would be disgusting even. And I guess and also that's part of it too, it would just be disgusting. <laughs> you know, it just, yeah. Um, and so everybody's got these standards and and it's from those standards. It's like, so, so it's really hard to have a conversation about, um, you know, the idea that it's, it's substandard, that life isn't good enough, when we all have these subjective definitions of what bad is or 
what good enough is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not articulating this brilliantly. But they're not logical standards, I guess is the point I want to get to. Is that for each of us, our, our tolerances, the things that scare the shit out of us, or the things that make us happy, and all that crap, is just so different. Our obsessions are different. Our tastes are so different. Uh, but it's all not, they're not rational standards. Um, the only part that's rational is, is the fact that when we do the math, we base it on the economy that's been established inside our head, the dollar values. Like, this is worth that. I would pay this much for that. Um, you know, kind of thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, and for each person, there's a different value placed on these things. You know, security versus freedom, or, you know, everything in, in, in our, you know, the realm we're living in. We have these different values, and we do the math once we've established, the values are kind of established by us subjectively, and so we do logical math in the sense that we make rational decisions based on our evaluations, but they're not rational in terms of the evaluations themselves. And so that's where the problem lies, because how do you try to rationalize that conversation? Now, from my perspective, there's two ways on this antinatalism subject. There's just two distinctly different tacks of argumentation. The first is to explain that it is all subjective in terms of the, the, the initial establishing inside of your brain of what is um, uh, worth what as an experience. Um, by explaining psychology and explaining that without your addiction there is no value without your hunger there's no great meal um, you know that it is all a, a deprivation that makes you gain more appreciation that these are real psychological phenomenon uh, that we're also created by a mechanism that intends us to play the game <laughs> I mean intends is a tricky word that is constructed to construct us to play the game. We're not going to exist if we're not game players or descendants of game players. So there's going to be mechanisms built into our psychology that are going to make us tend uh, to do the forward momentum thing, to, um, to uh, comfortably run the wheel um, in terms of our psychology. It will make sense to us, psychologically, uh, to fight and run. Uh, because that's what we've been built to do by the, the natural mechanism. And that, that we have to check that, we have to balance against that with some skepticism that maybe that has distorted or perverted value equations. Uh, so yeah, so it's a, the argument is basically, as I've stated it before, that there is only one thing in the universe, and that is a negative. And that the only way you make a positive is to erase a negative. <clears throat> and that's it. That's, that's the ethical value morality of the universe. And the um, creation of a need machine, a sentient organism, that is now has a welfare and can be harmed. Only sentient creatures can be harmed. Um, yeah, that creates all this negative potential, and uh, the game <clears throat> is to prevent it from releasing as much negative as possible in terms of what it personally experiences, and also to, um, <clears throat> because it's also an actor, uh, not only a re receiver, uh, it's also a projector of influence, um, that yeah, it should in its behavior. Um, you know, release as few negatives as possible. Oh, damn, I missed them twice. Pretty damn lame. Um, <laughs> yeah, waiting. Uh, switch hands. Whew. I don't know if this is my good side or my bad side. I don't remember. I have a good side and I have a bad side. I should try to good side myself. Maybe I should just do the forward thing, but it feels awkward. You're much more aware of the camera when it's right in your face. 
Uh, yeah, it just feels stupider, stupider, less, and it's less comfortable, let's say. Um, it's more awkward, uh, more distracting. All right, so anyway, let's moving on to the next argument. <laughs> the other argument is, is this imposition argument, which seems so obvious to me. Uh, and it just it's pretty simple. I mean, it is. Yeah. What do you? What are? What? 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 What are you willing to impose on somebody else? So I've analogized it to, let's say, somebody gets sick on roller coasters, and there's six of you, and five of you want to go on the roller coaster, and it'll make one person sick. Uh, would you oblige that sixth person to be sick, or would you just say, "I can do something else," <laughs> you know? And that's where we come down to it's being a luxury, this living thing. It's not servicing any function. It's reproduction for the sake of reproduction. And that has to be justified by more of an accomplishment. So, yeah, unless you're, unless you're saving something else from a greater misery than the one person you're making sick, uh, you really can't justify uh, taking from that one person, imposing on that one person. And if you think you can, I would like you to articulate uh, your justification for that imposition. Why wouldn't it be suitable to call you rude or imposing or selfish uh, if that was an actual circumstance? And you decided to drag them along, to throw them in the trunk, so to speak, and uh, force them to play your game. Uh, yeah, so it's a simple argument, the imposition argument. And, uh, I don't, I, you know, it hasn't been rationally dealt with. The only people dealing with it are just saying something stupid like, I didn't reproduce, my cells did it. <laughs> you know. So. How you doing? Oh. Uh, a dog and his human. Uh, so anyway, um. Yeah, so, sorry, this video is a little disconnected. I'm having a difficult day, and, <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is. <sighs> yeah, there are other things I want to get to, but I don't even know how to get to them yet. People send me a couple of links to really, really, really dumb videos, and I'm like, oh, crap. <sighs> you know, I mean, they're so dumb, I just don't know if I can rationally respond to them. Without just, <laughs> without just blowing my brains out. I mean, it's just, I mean, this is what humans are made out of. Uh, it's just, fuck it. I mean, they're too stupid. I can't talk to them. <sighs> Damn. So irritating. You have to do this in some sort of stupid, I don't know. This has to be done like a step at a time, like with most things, you have to work people up to it. What it really needs is a good movie. We need to make an anti-natalist movie. So maybe that's the thing to do, is work on a good screenplay. Uh, yeah, I don't even know, you know, that really should work. But, you know, there's been right to die movies and people have loved them and liked them and all that kind of crap. but doesn't seem to change policy anywhere, which is kind of a bummer. But I think it has changed mentalities. So I think if you could actually have a direct democracy for a day and vote on those kind of issues, I think it would win. So it's just a matter of getting through the politics now. The stubborn, stupid, moronic, myopic, you know, special interest politics. <sighs> don't want to go there. So, I guess I'll finish up and go back to the psychology part again. Because that's what it really is. It's an argument between psychologies about what we should value and how much value we should place on it. I place very little value on the roller coaster ride, on the climbing of the mountain, on the, you know, even the beautiful romantic uh, afternoon at the seashore or something and the wonderful sunset and the holding of the hands and the uh, whatever <laughs> you know 
Uh, it's good stuff, but I wouldn't make somebody else suffer for it to have it. And uh, so that's where this all kind of turns into shit. I mean, who's somebody else to tell somebody else what to feel or how to feel? So I'm not telling you how to feel. You can feel like life is wonderful. Go ahead. You can feel like your life particularly is wonderful and joyous and spectacular and magnificent. Uh, but I think you got to concede rationally that there are other sentient creatures on this planet who may not be experiencing sentience as wonderful. They may not feel it as, uh, as wings. They might feel it as a lead knife through their head. <laughs> you know, they might not be soaring. They might be being dug into the ground like a plow, force-fed dirt and rocks, and, uh, you know, forced to consume, uh, you know, something just disgusting and ugly to them. I mean, I just think it's rational to understand that your psychology isn't necessarily the only or right psychology. And even if there was no right and wrong, you still have to concede that until you find a cure for a psychology that finds life disagreeable, um, you really don't have a right to keep imposing it on the comfortably non-existent. And all of the non-existent are comfortably non-existent. Oh dear, people in my pool. Shame, shame. Horror, horror. Crap, crap. Shit, shit. <laughs> damn, damn. Yes, it's double bad news. Alright, till next time.